Over the next maybe two or three decades, there could be some quite extreme changes in terms of how we move around to visit each other and to, uh, to go places. The thing that's different about an autonomous vehicle as opposed to you driving it yourself is that you can only perceive what is pretty much in front of your head, wherever that happens to be pointing. Now, an autonomous vehicle can be looking in complete sphere around itself all the time. That makes the potential for it to be much safer. So the Ventura project, its main measurable objectives are actually not the technology. They're user acceptability, effects on insurability and legality. And AXA are clearly very involved in the last two of those. So when we started with our work in this area, you know, the questions were, who is liable, what is liable, what's that chain of liability? And I think where we've come in actually quite a short distance of time is saying actually the whole premise of insurance on the roads is to protect road users and pedestrians. Somewhere between 95 and 98% of all accidents on the road are due to driver inattention. We are looking at the potential of saving thousands of lives with the increased use of this technology and that, that's just got to be a good thing. There's a real difficulty here in terminology being banded around between driverless, automated, autonomous, connected and autonomous. The most accepted measure of autonomy in vehicles is the SAE level, which has five levels. Zero being car can't do anything for you, it's, it's all you. Um, one, probably what we would define as uh, cruise control. Levels two and three are gradually increasing levels of autonomy, but, but even by the time you get to level three, the person sitting in the driving seat is still responsible and in control of the vehicle, even if they're not actually driving it at that instant. Level four will give you a choice between actually choosing manual or automated mode. If it needs to stop, it will go to safe harbour. And level five, uh, which is absolutely no driver input whatsoever, I should say, no human input whatsoever. In terms of getting a, an insurance policy for a vehicle in the future, there's probably two things that we would consider. If you're still owning a vehicle, then you're going to take out a motor insurance product. Of course you are. But the great thing about the law that we've helped government craft will mean that from an end consumer perspective, there's no different to now. It is the status quo, and that's been deliberately designed that way to make sure that we instill consumer trust. I think there was this sense that automated vehicles could fundamentally disrupt motor insurance in the UK and, and, and change the market in a way that perhaps we, we hadn't imagined. And the truth is, that's a really good thing, because if we're talking about the societal changes like road safety, um, like saving people's lives, it doesn't matter what disruption happens within our own market. What we're capable of doing is actually finding an insurance solution that meets those needs. Mm -hmm.